So this is a Cusco limited slip differential. Uh, I'm gonna take it apart and show you some of the, the inner workings of it and things that we can do for setup uh, to adjust it to our needs. There's four bolts that hold these faces together uh, and hold the whole unit together. Uh, there is pressure springs in there, so I'm going to make sure that I take these off slowly and evenly, uh, not to uh, torque anything around sideways. So hold a little bit of pressure down on it as you take out the last bolts. All right, and now these case halves will come apart. So, here's the inside of our Cusco di differential. Uh, you can see uh, there's lots of little pieces and things going on here. Uh, and we can put everything back together in a certain order uh, that's going to make it perform the way we want it to. So, I'm going to leave that down for a second and we'll talk about half of it at a time. So if you call Cusco and you tell them what you're trying to do when you order a new differential, uh, they will actually send these to you already set up uh, in, in, the, in what they think is going to be your best bet. Uh, and this one was already set. Uh, we're just going to take it apart so we can kind of show you some things that are going on. So we have all these uh, different friction disks that are in here. We can actually change the order of these and how they're stacked in here to give us better performance. If you look right now, these alternate uh, between ones that are splined on the inside versus one splined on the outside. So if these alternate back and forth every time, you never have two of the same stacked in a row, this is going to give you 100% lockup. This is the most efficient uh, stack that, that you can put in this differential. If you wanted to make this have a little bit more slip in the system and everything wouldn't bind quite so hard, uh, you can actually change the order of these, right? You could take uh, ones that spline in the middle and put two of those in a row. Then if you did that, uh, and there's a whole order, you'd have to look online to, to see the exact specs. I would be referring to these uh, when I was actually doing the job. Uh, but you can make this go from 100% down to 80%, down to 60%, uh, and possibly even further. So by changing the order of these, uh, you're changing the amount of slippage that you can have in here and how much everything is actually locking up. You also have uh, these springs between these side gears here, right? You see these little coil springs. You can change uh, how many springs you have in there that are pushing these apart for how easily uh, or how hard it is to, um, to, to, to lock everything up, figuring out what the preload is. That's what's changing the preload on there. And then we also have these ramp angles on here. So we can adjust what we had for a ramp uh, and we can set this diff up in uh, three different ways. This one uh, we could set up in, uh, looks like there'd be two different adjustments, right? Uh, so a lot of these differentials, you can have them set up in either um, a, a one way, one and a half way or two way. Uh, and I'll talk about the difference between all of those. A lot of differentials that you buy uh, especially this Cusco, has 
two different ramp profiles in one. So I could actually take all these guts apart, take this up, flop it around, put it back on, and have a whole different setup without having to buy any more parts. Uh, so that's really nice uh, if I was in here and I was trying to make a lot of adjustments all the time. So uh, to start off, a one-way differential, right? A one-way uh, means that these, and I'll try and get this on camera. One way would be these ramps right here, looking like this. So on the acceleration side, uh, your pin is going to try and separate these apart, right? It's going to try and push these apart. When you push these apart, that's what pushes these discs all together, and that's what actually gives you that lockup. But on the back side of it, on, on the deceleration side, it's just straight down, right? It's just flat. So there's no ramps there. That's not going to try and spread these apart. So you only have diff lockup under acceleration. So uh, the one-way differential uh, isn't going to be great for, for if you're trying to do any kind of stability under braking uh, or anything on decel. Once, once you lift off that gas, it's just not working anymore. A one and a half way means uh, you have your acceleration ramp, but then there's also another ramp for decel. So it's going to allow some lockup, not quite as efficient, right? It's going to give you just partial uh, lockup. It won't work quite as well but it will give you some stability under braking. And then a true two-way would mean that you have the same ramp profile for acceleration and deceleration. So under really heavy braking or under just any kind of uh, no load on the gas, it's really going to lock these up as well uh, and give you a lot, of, a lot of stability. This would be your one-way ramps where you have your flat side, then your angled side on your acceleration then this would be your one and a half way. So you have your acceleration side, you have that steep ramp, and then you also have the ramps back here for under decel. And you can see the angle, the way that that's going to push apart like that, that's what's going to spread and push everything around. So one way, one and a half way. So this diff doesn't have a true two way, but one, way, uh, one and a half way is probably going to be our best bet for rally. Sometimes if you are changing which ramp profile you want to use, you would actually have to take this apart. You can take your side gear off uh, and you might have to flip these spider gears uh, upside down to see, you can see how there's different cuts on here. Uh, and that's going to ride on each of those ramps in a certain way. And some ways might work better than others. Uh, but that will all be in the instructions, you know, they'll tell you for which setup, how you should uh, set everything. Uh, that way you're not going to have any problems. You can see in here that there's additional slots where we could add more springs, giving us more preload on this differential. Looking at the angle of these ramps, the steeper uh, the ramp is in this direction, the easier it's going to be under uh, you once you get one tire losing traction one tire starts spinning this ramp is really going to drive these apart when these start to when, when this pin pushes up on these two ramps it's driving these side gears apart uh, and that's what's going to put all the pressure on these plates so the steeper that is the easier those are going to push apart so if you have a very high horsepower vehicle and you had a very steep angle in here, you might just instantly get lock up, right? So you might use uh, a, a lower profile ramp, something uh, that's a little bit flatter in this direction. And that's going to, with that, those higher horsepower vehicles, have to work a little bit harder to get that lock up. So again, uh, when you call Cusco and tell them what you're doing, uh, they will send you the diff already set up for what they think is going to be best for you. Um, but just out of curiosity, I did want to take this apart to see what we were set at, uh, just so I can write down the notebook and know what we're at going forward in case we did want to make some changes uh, to fit the driving style uh, of whoever's driving the vehicle. So I'm going to put this all back together, uh, get everything set up, slam the ring gear back on, uh, get some new side bearings on this differential, and we can put everything back together. So as I'm putting these back together, uh, you can see what I was talking about before, how uh, some of these are splined on the inside and that's what's going to be attached to those side gears and some of these are going to be attached to the outside 
uh, and that's what's actually giving you contact between the two uh, to connect the side gears uh, to the actual case of this. In this case, which is going to be bolted to that ring gear, uh, is how you, that's how you make that, that lock up between uh, your ring gear, everything feeding power into it and actually transmitting that power out to your axles. Make sure these are lined up before you bolt it back together. And again, since there's pressure on these when you're tightening them down, work your way down a little at a time. Don't just tighten one down all the way. Move around so everything gets tightened down evenly. Once those are all tight, make sure they're nice and snug. These are small bolts, so don't go crazy with them. All right, once those are good, and these can't actually come apart because the ring gear is going to hold them on. 